The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the fantastic Friday. It is December 6th. Thanks so much for joining me. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary day, an extraordinary weekend, an extraordinary life. And the easiest way to do that, well, first is to make sure you're not a prisoner of your past. But then it's also to realize that everything in life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you, when you and I can recognize that, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But much more important than that, during this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, you can always send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, in our Tigers, Dan. Well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. So all the indices in the green, in the green, uh, pretty much big time, so to speak. Uh, New York Stock Exchange is the weakest indice, uh, only up 1%. That would be 126 points out there. But it's moving higher with less relative energy. Hmm, something to think about. You've got the spot volatility it's trading below its 50-day exponential moving average, giving the leverage, liquidity leverage, back to the bulls. That's trading out at 1348. 50 days is somewhere around 1599. We'll check in on that. Goldilocks back nearly 17 bucks. It's off 1%. Trade out at 1466. Still hasn't broken through a key level of support. So just consolidating in between support and resistance. We'll take a look at that. Silver's moving lower with less relative weakness out there on its daily time frame. It saw 43 cents trade out at 16.53. Lights we crude has tested the key level of resistance that we've been taking a look at for a couple of weeks out there. Can it take that out? I don't know, but we'll go take a look at that area. It is in wave number seven, you may recall. So wave number seven right up into resistance. If it's going to turn, it's going to turn here soon. Not necessarily like at 110, it's 109 right now, but maybe over the next couple of days. And if it breaks through that resistance, well, then it's telling you of a change in trend. And that's where we're going to lead into to our first question that came in from Robert B. We just simply go right from Lightsweed Crew to his question. And his question was or is, <clears throat> let me see this here, came in a bit earlier. Uh, would you please look at XOP and let me know if it is bottomed on a daily or weekly time frame? I don't clearly have a position, however, I'm interested in going long when the time is right. So if we take a look at XOP, first let's put up our three excuse me, time frame charts out here, daily, weekly, monthly, just get a feel for where price is trading in relationship to support and resistance of its TAS market profiles. And right now it's trying to, it's a brand new profile that formed yesterday in the XOP, Robert. In the top of that box is 2111. We're trading at 2116. A close above that on a daily basis would say, hmm, something to think about. Maybe price might move higher. Higher where? Well, the top of the weekly profile is at 2443, so that would become the next target. But before it gets to 2443 out there, with regard to the XOP, boy, we really need to make sure that this thing has bottomed. Why? Why would Steve-O say that? Well, folks, if you take a look, you know, here you've got markets at all-time highs or close to all-time highs. The XOP I'd see S&P oil and gas exploration and production ETF out there. It made its high. Well, actually, its high was made, its all-time high was back here in June of 2014. It did make a, a, a lower high earlier back in 2008. But really where I'm going with the lows is the lows, well, they're really not the 2008 lows anymore. They're the 2019 lows. But if we do take a look at that swing point from November of 2018 at the 2290 level, when price did make its way down back in 2016, January of 2016, that's where it found support. It is below that level right now, Robert. So 
it's a it's a well let's go take a look at the other charts out here but that that's not a beautiful story out there the other problem now i believe it is the monthly chart robert that's going to give you and i the signal that a bottom may have formed this is going to be or should be or could be uh, it's too early in the month to really say that but this may be that's probably it may and be uh be a uh, bar eight of a td setup nine count pattern out there Price is also moving lower, doing with rest, less relative energy. So if this month we could see some type of bullish reversal candle out there, well, that could be a signal of a longer-term bottom. But the real key here is going to be a close above Stevie's red line. Stevie's red line is priced at 2308. That is on the monthly time frame. And, Robert, that is where price needs to clear, whether you get in the trade now and you just trade it for a few points. Um, you know, it's about 10 percent, give or take. Uh, not bad if you can catch it. But so let's go back and look at the other charts. You had mentioned weekly time frame chart. And I believe the weekly time frame chart has been trying to form a bottom or did form a bottom a while back. But let's go take a look at it, see what's going on here. Price was moving lower, doing less relative energy back into August 30th. Now, price is trading above that low, and we did get a bullish engulfing candle the week of October 25th. We may get a bull sash candle this week, just depending on where uh, the XOP closes. So that's trying to really confirm that Rhodes momentum indicator signal on the weekly time frame. So the weekly is saying if you're looking for a signal on a weekly, you sort of have it, but you must know you've got this resistance, 2443, 2290 perhaps. Um, in the week, the daily chart out there, you did mention the daily. I should show the daily for you. But on the daily time frame, well, nothing out here. Uh, that's going to give us a clue of a bottom coming from the daily. Just simply price right now is dealing with a resistance level. If it doesn't clear that resistance level, in fact, right now, uh, must have been some sellers in the XOP because price is right back below the top of that profile, 2111. That is where the sellers are. So if you're going to buy this, and price closes below that, well, then try the 2017 area. That's where buyers reside. That's the bottom of that daily profile out there. So, Robert, I hope that uh, helps you out. Thanks so much for writing in. That bleeds us or leads us right into Light Sweet Crude. I had mentioned this earlier uh, as we were doing the opening. Uh, subscribers and I, we were in a long position in Light Sweet Crude. We ended up uh, taking our profits uh, using a stop that, that took us out of the trade. It was on this big bar here, this downranging bar back on uh, what was the uh, day out there. No big deal. It was a big flush to the downside. And what it did was it took some of our profits, but not all of them. We made some uh, some uh, some money out there. It was on November 29th. Our target was always 5960. And 5960 was the TD set up nine count um, resistance level where price had broken down. You can see it made that bottom with that TD nine count back on October 3rd. So that was the bottom utilizing that pattern. And now the key is can price close about 59.60? You will see letter G above today's session. That could extend. That's using part of Basil Chapman's wave program, but it's not the it's not the uh, Chapman wave in its entirety. For that, you've got to use a whole. You've got to first just sign up for Basil's workshops. Even though he just recently did one, you can always catch the archive. I'm sure of that if you were to sign up. But um, in any event, uh, here you're in wave number seven. Can be a topping area right into resistance. So, Robert, you know what? To the extent that XOP is influenced by light sweet crude, today's not the day to enter that trade. You'd want to see price close above 59.60 in light sweet crude. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. The request is to take a look at copper, gold, and silver. And so we shall. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Folks, uh, Dow's up 350, S&P 33, NDX 100 up 93 points out there. We'll uh, go ahead and take a look, obviously, at the equity markets. But let's uh, let's go to our request line out here. And our request line was to uh, take a look at uh, gold, silver, and copper. So what are we going to start with first? Let's start with silver. Hi ho, silver. So, what do we know about silver? First, it's getting crushed today. But let's take a look at where price is trading in relationship to its profiles. And here we'll just simply, well, it's below the daily profile. That was 1691 out there. Okay, it breaks one key level of support. Where's the next level of support? We're just taking a look at our TAS market profiles. They can help us to identify support. And what you will see here is on a weekly basis, the level of support to say, now I'm using my synthetic contract. Why am I doing that? Because last week, uh, I believe. It was last week we rolled out of the December contract into the March contract for silver during rollover period where I've got lack of data, so to speak, out here. Better to use my uh, Etch-a-Stitch version of the uh, silver contract, different than the continuous contract. This way, you and I have market profiles that we can use, that we can rely upon. In this case here, this is a bullish structured weekly profile. And the bottom of that is 1658. The low so far has been 1658. How does that work, folks? Remember, at the bottom of the profile is where buyers are at. At the center of the profile is where both buyers and sellers are. We're just simply going to call it the 50-50. And when the buyers, in this case here, at the 50-50 level, the center of the box, are closer to the bottom of the box. That's very important because then you have a large group of buyers that are down there. And because it's bullish in structure, if we are to see a close below 1658 out there, that would spell curtains. I'm not sure what kind of curtains, but the kind of curtains that move prices to the downside. Now, move it to where? Well, if we take a look at the weekly time frame chart out here, again, I have been cautioning folks for, for a while now about being careful about gold, about silver, about the equities that are in there because of the significant topping patterns that are present. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart for gold, we're going to see, or silver, I should say, we're going to see that back in November of 2018, this bottom with the Rhodes Momentum Indicator signal that actually occurred on December the 7th out there when we saw that bullish reversal candle. And in essence, and then the price moved up and it topped back in February of 2019, forming that TD setup nine count. 
Price comes back, test the breakout area, 1483. Uh, there was a close below it for one week. You need to see two candle closes below any level of support to tell you that it has broken out there. That was not the case. Price found support where it should have and makes a move to a TD nine count top. It does that the week of September 6th. Now what we have here is an A to B equals CD to the downside. Gigantic A to B equals CD to the downside. The B point was taken out with that wide-ranging bar the week of November 8th. Folks, this chart is scary. No, not that scary, but it is pretty darn scary if you're trying to take long positions in silver and you're not just a trader out here. The target to the downside, and usually metals in their A to B equals CD, they'll overshoot, but the one-to-one -one is 1568. Now, at 1525 is where the breakout began on a weekly basis in silver. That is likely where it is headed to, because 1568 is the one-to-one. -one. It overshoots. Well, why doesn't it overshoot to go back and test support? What's going to occur here, I don't know what the timing is, it is going to shake the bulls out of gold and silver, and they are never going to want to own it. And that's when you and I are going to want to own it and probably hold on to it for quite a while. But right now, when we take a look at the longer-term charts of gold and silver, we did gold, and it showed similar, which showed the monthly topping signals and weekly topping signals. So really, the same kind of thing. We don't need to go there. Uh, peak. We'll come back to um, we'll come back to uh, high-grade copper. Uh, but first, we've got a caller on the line. I see that. So let's go to Ron in Denver. Ron, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Great, Steve. Thank you for taking my call. My pleasure. Uh, you want to take a look at Visa? I was interested in getting in a call position. Take me out to January on Visa V. And uh, I just wondered. It's been trading flat for a while, but looks like it, uh, to me, like it wants to get a little stronger. And I just wondered what you, how it looks to you. So you've got resistance. Uh, would, if we just take a look at and start with the daily, weekly, monthly profile levels, the monthly profile shows you've got resistance at 187.05. You're trading at 181 right now. And the daily, and it's a bear structured daily profile, says 184.85. Hasn't really participated today in this nice rally here. So, and knowing that you've got resistance up there, it just, at least it, it, it's, it smells to me like caution so to speak, when I take a look at the uh, Visa chart. Um, let's see if there's anything else that I've got here that we can take a look at, shows us tops or bottoms or anything. Um, the daily time frame, no, no pattern there to speak of. Let me take, and, and really that's what it would be. But let me just take a look at the weekly time frame out here, see what we've got. You know, the weekly shows a, a Rhodes Momentum Indicator top. That was September 13th. That high out there is 187.85. Price on a weekly basis is below Stevie's green line this may be bar number eight of a td setup nine count on a weekly basis that suggests caution uh to you ron I, I guess when i take a look at this and we we look at the patterns that are present inside of uh, visa on the daily which is not much other than resistance but weekly we should certainly see that top out there i'm not so sure that this and and today's action out here um, you know, you're flat, in essence, in Visa today. So maybe that's maybe okay. that's setting you a signal. I appreciate that, and I'll hold off. Uh, can I ask you one more? It's you in can. the gaming industry. Yeah, sure. should have a big Christmas. It's uh, eight, uh, Activision, ATVI. Okay. And uh, uh, what, you're looking to do the same type of trade yeah, same here? Same thing going into January on calls. I yeah. know that they got hit, uh, I think, because of this Hong Kong thing. Okay. It's affected them because they used okay. to be up to around 85. And so, uh, I, yeah, so I don't know, you know what they, you, because what's, you know where they they have to be careful or they'll get shut out of the Chinese market. Right. But right. Uh, they got a lot of games. Okay, uh, I, I believe you. I believe you. Uh, this is the only game, game I play. Now coming out. Yeah, yeah. So here's here's the deal with regard to Activision, um, and and just from a from a profile standpoint here, you're you're looking for Activision to trade higher into the end of the year, and so ideally, uh, first you'd like to see price trading above resistance. I mean, it's like driving down the expressway, you know. And I'm sure, you know, where you live, uh, in Denver, there's probably. There's probably, if you travel the same road each and every day, there's probably areas where there's congestion. It doesn't matter if the sun is shining or it's raining or it's snowing out there. But once you get past that congestion, you sort of know you're home free. And that's what understanding where the resistance levels are. Well, 
prices above the resistance level on a daily time frame. So we already like this chart better than Visa. Uh, resistance here was 53.60. And then on the monthly time frame, prices above resistance, which was 53.30. So that's your support level um, out here. The weekly, it's trading with inside the profile, 56.26 to 51.22. So your resistance out here would be 56.26. It's equally distributed. That box, meaning the center, is pretty much in the center. So no reason to be too alarmed by it. There are sellers at 56.26, but doesn't mean you can't take the trade out there. Um, on the daily, I'm not seeing anything here to be aware of other than back at its, uh, which might be an all-time high, the high from November. So, Rana, I just have to say, in looking at the chart patterns out here, this would be the better of the two to uh, take the style trade that you're looking for. Okay. All I, right, my I friend? appreciate that, and I'll give it a shot. We'll see All how right. it works over the next month and a half. Sounds great. Hey, have a great weekend. Yeah, Thanks I appreciate that very much. Thank you, sir. You bet. That was Ron in Denver. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now is a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So the question is, uh, where's Copper headed to? So let's go take a look at the doctor out here. And uh, what I've got up on my screen right now for John inside the Tiger's Den is that uh, synthetic version of my contract. This is going to be the more reliable set of profiles for us. And well, you can see that's uh, occurring today. 
uh, in the two right-hand panel charts, our daily and weekly, that uh, price is above both of those profile levels. So just like Ron and I were talking, it's nice for price to get over where sellers are at, where resistance is. We'll find some other sellers, I'm sure. Um, and, and, but with regard to these charts, with regard to profiles, um, the explosion has taken place or the the traffic jam, I should say, really, the traffic uh, has now cleared up and price can move to higher levels. Price in the case here on its 60, 240 daily, weekly, above all profile levels. So no reason for price to stop. However, not so fast. We say not so fast. We want to go and be able to identify support and resistance out here. And when price is above resistance levels of um, our TAS market profiles, what do we go to next? Either larger time frame which we probably could do. We could put the quarterly up here and figure that out. We're not going to do that. We could do that, but we're not going to do that. Or you go to horizontal trading ranges. I don't have the time to do that. We could do that out there. Uh, but we could just look at the daily and weekly charts and start looking for any TD setup resistance levels. That we're going to do because that's a simple thing. So let's pull over that daily time frame. And the question is, will high-grade copper target the 280 level? Well, lo and behold, we've got this nice explosion, but because of a good old Tommy DeMarc are utilizing a portion of his system, and I mean only a small little nugget, the easiest piece. Uh, the reason why we selected this, well, I select this for a number of reasons, but one of them because it's easy for you to do, for you to calculate. That's the beautiful thing. You don't have to be a technologist, a technician to be able to figure this out. You just have to be able to count and take a look at close versus close and close versus close, whether it's going up or whether it's going down. That's a beautiful thing. And the beauty of it is it sets up levels of support and resistance. And the next level of resistance is $2.74 out there. And this level here was created, well, it takes us back to the high of May 21st out there. It actually formed and completed on June 3rd. Third, when price bottom with a TD set up nine count. That's a beautiful thing, isn't it? Uh, well, Stevie says it's a beautiful thing. You may not think it's a beautiful thing, but I think it's a beautiful thing. In fact, when it makes a high uh, out here on the trading day of July 19th, it does it with a TD set up nine count. And you can see how this resistance area, John, has really been nice resistance. So, yeah, you got a nice wide ranging bar today, but, but let's realize where resistance really is right now. And it's at two dollars and seventy-four cents. I know you're just looking for two eighty, probably that prior TD nine count high back here um, on July nineteenth. But if price can close above two seventy-four and do it two consecutive bars, daily bars, we're looking at a daily chart right now. Then price can move all the way up to its next breakdown area, and that would be two ninety-two. So beautiful moves. Yes, price is above resistance, but now what you and I know is there's really a more important level of resistance had nothing to do with the TAS market profiles, and it's sitting there at two seventy-four. So I hope that that helps you out with regard to what we see on the daily time frame chart for high grade copper. I believe there was a request to, a request to go take a look at rig. Um, lots of things, lots of moving parts going on. So I'm not sure who requested that. And hopefully it was a request. But if not, well, I'm requesting it then. And we're going to go take a look at RIG, Transocean out here. Transocean right now trading above its daily profile. So free to roam to further higher prices above the weekly profile, which is 515 and trading in between a monthly profile brand new that formed here in December a bullish in structure and so if price can close above 557 you're trading at 574 that's probably pretty close right now it's suggesting that Transocean rig wants to trade up to its resistance level or seven dollars and 38 cents that is the top of the weekly profile but let's not stop there let's go take a look at the daily time frame see what do we see here well what we see here is that Transocean or ticker symbol RIG uh, is going to close or appears like it's going to close above resistance 540 so a second close Close above that looks good, but geez, Louise. At 596, you've got resistance as well out here. Now, this bottom with a nice little TD setup nine count bottom. It did it at the bottom of its profile. It did it with a hammer candle. Hammer candle telling you that the market was, or this market instrument was trying to form a bottom. Voila, it did. That's a beautiful thing. Price now above its resistance area out here. It does look to me like on the daily time frame, this still wants to head higher, but 596 is going to be the next resistance level. So if we can clear that, that would be a beautiful thing. Let's look at the a weekly time frame chart. What's the weekly chart show us for ticker symbol RIG? Not much. 
not much. So there's nothing here. You know, I say not much. It's not the pattern. I didn't. I didn't do the wave count on it. Um, uh, we could, but 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 we won't. We don't need to. The daily and the profiles are suggesting to you and I that price wants to go higher. And on the monthly time frame chart, I don't have anything either. So we're just gonna have to resort to the daily. But whoever requested rig, or if somebody did, or if you didn't, well, rig looks like it wants to continue to move higher. Uh, I do do believe we've got another request out here. We do. This is from Brent in Martinez, California. Brent wants to take a look at ticker symbol S C P E out here. Um, because you, you always need those continuing professional education credits if you want to go ahead and maintain your CPA. CPAs need CPEs. You got to love it. But this is Calon Petroleum Company out here. Now, what I really should do is read Brent's question out here. So uh, looks like it's uh, bottom of the daily and weekly were made. Uh, uh, do, 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 do weekly Ken is looking fairly bullish. Your thoughts would be very helpful. Have a great weekend. You have a great weekend. Let's all have a great weekend. So here's what we do know about uh, Callan, Pete, Petroleum, or Pete, however you want to refer to it, with regard to trading into its resistance levels. Uh, it's above its bear structured daily profile. Brent, that was $3.95. The center was closer to the top, which was 384 and the bottom or support was 362. This is suggesting higher price. On a weekly basis, price is getting back inside the range of its weekly profile, the bottom of which was 393. Now, there's resistance at 428. This is a bullish structured profile, but because price had closed below the bottom of that profile last week and the week before, so we had two bars there, a counter trend rally would find resistance at around 428. It's trading at 405 right now. So just watch that area. If price can clear that, with some conviction, then the top of that profile is where price would be headed to. That would be five bucks even, Stephen. The uh, monthly time frame chart, nothing here. Price well below its profile levels. Now, on a daily time frame, if we take a look at it, uh, all I have, and that's all you need, is a TD setup nine count pattern. And that four bar number eight was on November 21st. That was the so called bottom as we speak. And if price can uh, move, oh, I've got CPS. CPE. Sorry about that, Brent. But hey, CPS formed a, a nice uh, TD setup nine count bottom for those of you that care. It does help if you actually type in the correct symbol, doesn't it? It's a beautiful thing. Okay, so now we take a look at uh, CPE. Geez, forget about this profile. I don't know why this profile is different, but uh, I don't see that bottoming pattern, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator bottom on this uh, daily time frame chart out here, but uh, that's okay. And the profile we're gonna rely upon is the e-signal version here, the one with the uh, black background chart. On a weekly time frame, what do we got on the weekly time frame? Um, let's just do a quick wave count, see where we're at on the wave count. Was there a wave number seven? Uh, there was, wave number seven. So you got a wave seven bottom, a nice uh, three river, uh, morning star pattern on its weekly time frame and this would say that price would target 584 five dollars and 84 cents is the target between five and 584 for ticker symbol cpe that was for brent in california we'll be right if you're in the cd market and looking for a secure investment the tiger first mortgage program may work for you the security for these first mortgages are building lots in the tax opportunity zone in st petersburg florida the Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. 
Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. What did I just do here? I lost my sound. Hopefully, give me a high sign if you guys can hear me inside the Tiger Stand. I don't know if I click something uh, that I shouldn't have or what. But um, hi. Okay. I guess, you, I guess you're I guess you saying you can hear me. Yeah? You can hear me, Jay? Good here. Okay, perfect. Thanks. So uh, currently, we've got the Dow up 346. The S&P is up uh, 32. Uh, let's go to our next request out here, which was for uh, ticker symbol CHWY. And uh, so that is Chewy. And the question for uh, for Hector is, uh, mm, says you called a nice bottom in this puppy, scary candle appeared. How do how does uh, Chewy look now? So let's take a look at that uh, Chewy. I didn't call a bottom, that's for sure. It would have been Stevie's tools that would have called the bottom. That in this case here for Chewy um, is the Rhodes Momentum Indicator bottom. They, they push price lower. They did it with less relative energy. You can see that uh, I know it really began out. Well, there were a couple different times that it began. Uh, once was September 28th. The next was October 1st. Of course, that was just a warning shot across the bow. Those didn't matter because there was no bullish reversal candle. Remember, folks, you and I were methodical about this. We don't care about the news. Well, we might be interested in the news, but with regard to the charts, none of us can hover over a candle and remember exactly what happened out there. We don't need to. We just need to know chart patterns. In the case of Chewy, moves lower, does with less relative energy, forms a, a bullish reversal candle out here, does that with the piercing candle on November 20th. Uh, that's really what called the uh, top price right now is trading really just with inside its profiles. Hector, there's nothing, um, there's no problem. You're probably referring to the candle of December 5th out there where it was a wide ranging bar to the downside. But what price never did was broke through any levels of support. So right now, all Chewy is doing is trading with inside its consolidation range of 2261 to 2473. But it's trading at 2488. Voila. Now price is potentially going to close above a key level of resistance. And if it can do that, what it's suggesting to you, as long as you've got two bars with closes above that, is 2827 becomes your target. Hector out there. So Chewy still has a nice bottom. Looks like it wants to head to 2827. Hasn't traded long enough for you and I to go take a look at the weekly and or monthly charts. It just doesn't matter. There's not enough data for you and I to really be able to uh, uh, make any call there. The next question, this one is coming in from uh, from Sat P, and the ticker symbol is BYND, uh, Beyond Meat. Stevie still has not tried Beyond Meat. Stevie will not try Beyond Meat. I like my vegetables as vegetables. I like my meat as meat. Seems kind of simple out there, but uh, I don't know. I say get a salad with your burger. Yeah, doesn't that sound? Or put lettuce and tomato on your burger out there or put burger on your 
imitation burger. Okay, beyond that, okay, let's get to beyond that out there. Actually, it was just kind of stalling because I couldn't get the ticker symbol up on my other charts. But the question is, can you please look at beyond and uh, see the profiles? And if there's a bottom, should I wait or can I buy a few shares? Well, price is trading below the bottom of its daily profile. Bottom of its daily profile is 76.07. It's trading below the bottom of its weekly profile, 80.98. Not enough time for this to generate any kind of monthly time frame profile. But price almost back to where uh, this thing began trading from an IPO standpoint out there. If we take a look at Beyond meat, there was a skyrocket. Think of how many people this thing trapped up at the highs in the 200 to 240. It's trading at 75 buckaroonies out there. Holy shnikes out there. Now, if we do take a look at what does Beyond meat doing, well, right now today it's trying to form a bottom. Price moving lower, doing less relative energy. Um, yeah, it's trading below the bottom of that box, but you do have what appears to be a uh, Rhodes Momentum Indicator bullish reversal candle. That's called the Three River Morning Star. So, yeah, Sat P, if you want to go ahead and take a few shares, knowing that you haven't cleared resistance of any sort out here, uh, but you do have the bottom signal. That's what you were looking for. Uh, you would just go ahead and make sure that your stop was uh, the average true range over the last 10 days is 404. Multiply 404 times 1.2 seven or 1.618 that becomes the size of your stop if you risk one percent let's say it's on a ten thousand dollar account that would be a hundred bucks take a hundred bucks divided by what might be somewhere around five and that would be 20 shares that would be your one percent risk maybe you just do half of that but do the math that was just quick math in my head and my uh my abacus could be misaligned or something like that i would rather you do the proper position size remember folks it is all about position sizing when you are trading when you are trading investing it doesn't matter for what time frame it's all about position sizing why did my mouth i lost my mouse no wonder there we go let me try to get it back where where are you where all right, there we go. Okay, okie dokie. So there we go for Beyond Meat. Now, what we probably should do out here is take a look at the markets. We've gotten through all the questions out there. Um, uh, is the ES uh, singing the key of G? So, uh, Maria, and that's like the perfect segue. We haven't even covered the equity markets, but this is the segue into covering the equity markets. And Maria wants to know, has the ES Mini formed wave number seven? That would be letter G. As we take a look at it, it already has, at least according to the tools and the way that I calculate it. Um, so it's either in G, okay, right now, or it's in A, A or G. But what this did do out here, folks, and I'm going to try to pull this together, Maria, for you by taking a look at the daily and the weekly and then the Dow, but the under the covers of the Dow uh, to see what we see out here. Now, here's the A to B equals CD pattern, which completed with the bearish engulfing candle last Friday, the day after Thanksgiving, when we were all digesting, so too were the markets. And the markets digested by generating a bearish engulfing candle out there. And then, voila, we saw that move to the downside on Monday. And then on Tuesday, when we take a look at the ES Mini, didn't get all the way down to its breakout level of 3063, but got down to a level pretty close. Now, prices trade above the key level out here, Maria, probably about 3143. That is Stevie's green line. I'll tell you the reality, folks. If the ES Mini closes below 3143, this may just be a counter trend rally. It's a suggestion that resistance will have held. Likewise, Maria, if price closes above that, probably, well, well the ties will get tested, but it would appear that we would go and, or it would go and take out its even further and take out its uh, highs out there. Where would it go to with regard to the ES Mini? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. The answer to that question would be, well, where are the horizontal trading ranges? Here are the uh, daily, weekly, monthly horizontal trading ranges, and they would suggest a move, Maria, up into the 3184-ish area. That's what the ES Mini is looking like. Those are the patterns. What do we know that took place this week? As price pulled back, it tested that diagonal trend line, the yellow line out there. This signal there, M, is that this is a real breakout. Right, price gets above resistance, a resistance line, comes back, tests it, rejects it. That's what happened this uh, this week, and and now it could be off. To, now, the races, when I say off the races, may just be another 30, 40 points higher in a 3184, especially if it closes above that 3143 level Stevie's green line out there. That's what it looks like to me. Now, if we go take a look at our TAS market profiles, we incorporate that so we can cover what Jay would need out here. Well, that's 3158. 
So we've got resistance in the ES Mini, 31.58. Um, and, and if price can clear that as well, then it should be up to that 3184-ish area out there. But folks, before we go to this breakout here, I'm just going to put this chart up on my screen. It's not a chart. It's one of my uh, tools. Helps us identify tops and bottoms. This is all of the stocks in the Dow 30. Look at the monthly column. It says MRMI. Look at all of those tops. Even if the markets continue to move higher, we may have some real troubles in River City. Real troubles. We'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's come back to Jay's uh, market profiles. We just touched on them briefly. The uh, Dow, that is panel number three from the left, two from the right. You can see it's trying to form a new daily profile. It keeps shifting, so we're not going to rely upon it uh, right now. But we do have uh, profiles that we can rely upon. The ES Mini, as we talked about, resistance at 3158. The Russell 2000 has hit its resistance level. It's backed off a bit, 1636 out there. So you've got two at resistance. Now, if the current profile inside the Dow is accurate, I don't know if it is or it's not. It's using my uh, using my uh, leading indicator. And even if it's not, we can go back to the current one, the one that was there yesterday. And where price would have stopped in some type of counter trend move would have been either the bottom or the center line. And price Prices right now is trading basically at that center line. So we've got three instruments at or near resistance. The NQ, not at resistance. It is above the top of its daily profile. However, how does this work? Isn't it a beautiful thing? Don't you love Stevie's green line or red line? 
because where has price stopped? And is Stevie's green and red line support or resistance? Why, yes, it is. So now what we've got, as explosive as a move as this has been, and M, we do have wave number seven inside of the NQ on a daily basis. Uh, we've got an A to B equals CD pattern, and we have price moving right up into resistance. So we've got all four contracts at resistance. So just be careful. Look, things look bullish. They, they absolutely do. You got the spot volatility index below its 50-day exponential moving average. That's somewhere around here. Where is it? Where is, where is that Where is that VIX chart? Where is it? VIX symbols. There we go. So you can see it's well below. Uh, well, well, yeah, it's well below. 1397 is the number. It's at 1356. So uh, things look bullish out there. But again, folks, and we showed you this just before we went to that last breakout here, 16 of the 30 Dow stocks. If you take a look at this column, it says MRMI, all of these topping signals. Look at the weekly. You've got plenty of weekly topping signals. By the way, you've got a bottoming signal here in McDonald's. If you were looking to add McDonald's to your portfolio, you should go explore that chart with regard to the Dow. Hey, folks, thanks so much for being here today, all week long. I look forward to seeing you on Magical Monday. Stay tuned. Your favorite polar bear is up next. And have a Coke with your favorite polar bear. Take care. Have a fantastic weekend.